Hello and welcome to my brand new YouTube channel, Free Motion Embroidery for Fun. My name's Heather and I live here in the lovely um, heart of County Down in Northern Ireland and I'm going to do some programmes about free motion embroidery and how I do it and how I really do love doing it because it's um, fun and you get some lovely end results. The first time I ever heard of free motion embroidery was um, at my patchwork class run by a lovely lady called Judith Hollies. Judith has a lovely website called Just Jude Designs. Check it out, it's wonderful. But Judith introduced me to this lovely lady who is called Poppy Teffrey. Poppy Teffrey lives in Cornwall where she runs a little um, workshop. She makes the most lovely bags, little purses, wash bags, um, uh, oven gloves. And um, even these little tiny badges, this one says tea on it because I love tea. This is um, Poppy's book, Free Motion Embroidery, and it tells you all you need to know about starting free motion embroidery and gives you some um, ideas for beginner's designs that'll help you practice and get your skills up to scratch. So when I first did free motion embroidery, I made quite a few wee pieces. This is one of the first pieces I did. Poppy's method is uses applique, which is means applying another bit of fabric to a background fabric. I cut out this little doggy shape and then I used my um, sewing machine to put on the black line to show his fur and the outline of his face. Another piece of English embroidery that I did, I did a long time ago when I first started was this um, cushion cover, child's cushion cover. It's a wee bit stylized, it's got a road some cars, some trees and a little sign that says home. But I discovered a lady on YouTube called Linda Miller and Linda Miller's technique of free motion embroidery is completely different. It's more pictorial and it, she uses her um, machine to paint with the thread instead of doing an outline like the Poppy Teffrey technique. I really, really like this technique because it um, gives shade and texture and depth to your picture and um, I'm going to be showing you how I develop my pictures using Linda Miller's technique. I'm go also going to be showing you um, in the next few videos how, what, how to choose the right fabric and interfacing, which is on the back of this, what size of hoop to use because um, I tried using a small hoop and this is no good. So I'll be advising you on what hoop to use. And also I'll be talking about um, the best sort of threads to use. Some threads are better than others. You'll discover that yourself, but I'll be talking about that in videos to come. But today what I'm gonna do is give you a little bit of a taster. Now this is a very small, example this is um poppies that i've done using free motion embroidery and as you can see it is a completely different technique to poppy taffery there's no applique it's just using the thread and the free motion of your machine to paint um this is quite a stylized picture of a poppy and really it's just coloring in but the skill comes with the moving of the piece and um, what I'll say to you is don't be intimidated by free motion embroidery. You have to put your foot down on the speed pedal of the sewing machine and sometimes people get really um, scared. But you have to remember that you're, control, you're in control. You stop it when you want to stop it. So what I'm going to do is do a few videos showing you how I set up and um, work my free motion embroidery and show you at the end of the videos I'm going to show you like a very complex piece but I'll take you through step by step and you're going to have some fun. Right, let's get started. Um, this little piece is a little piece that I doodled um, just to give me an idea of what I'm trying to do and we're going to start off with a very simple image and it's a little image of poppies. It's just got two colours, the lovely red and the black centre of the poppy. Now this is a stylized sort of um, image of a poppy. It's not a perfect poppy and um, so what I'm going to do is I've got my hoop already. I've got it as tight as a drum 
you can hear it. it sounds like one of those bodrum drums. And that's that's important whenever you, for your tension, whenever you're sewing. So I'm not Vincent van Gogh, and I'm sure a lot of us aren't, but some people are very good at art, but I'm all right, but not brilliant. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to draw some guidelines on the fabric, just to give us a helping hand along. So what I'll do is I'll put my wee image there. I'm just gonna start drawing um, wee stylized poppies. So the one, what the way I've drawn it is one leaf is bigger than the other. So any old way, any old different sizes. But one thing I'm aware of is the darning foot that does the free motion embroidery doesn't go right up to the edge of the hoop. So stay about an inch in from the edge. Otherwise you'll find yourself, you just can't, your, your foot will get in the way and you can't embroider. So I'm just drawing a whole lot of different V-size poppies, big leaf and a small leaf. Any old way, any old how. And I'm doing lots and lots of them because um, I can cut my image down to size when I finally want to um, put it into a frame or I can use the frame to cut off um, bits. I'm just putting them anywhere because in nature things are not exact. Poppies grow over the top of each other. There we go. We've got our, pop our guidelines and we're ready to go to the sewing machine. Well, here we are at the sewing machine and first things first, we need to put on my glasses because I can't see without them. This is my lovely Faf Ambition 1.5 sewing machine. It's a thoroughbred of a sewing machine. I have a Janome, which I love, but whenever I got this, the difference was incredible. A lot of people, including Poppy Teffrey, sew on vintage singers, the black ones with the lovely gold um, um, decoration on them. Um, I love my Faf. Um, because it just it's a workhorse and it just I just love it and I would highly recommend it um, so machines all set up I've got a lovely red thread in the top thread I've got some the same thread in the bottom and you'll notice this is an embroidery needle it's slightly larger eye than normal and um, having the right needle makes all the difference. So make sure you put in an embroidery needle if you're doing embroidery, a jeans needle if you're doing jeans. Um, the subject of needles is quite um, wide. There's lots of different numbers and you'll, but I'll explain to you what those mean in more videos as we go along. You'll notice that there's rather a strange contraption on this one. This is called a darning foot. And this is the sort of foot that you need if you're gonna do free motion embroidery. Um, it's also a bit of a safety thing because it means you're, you never get your fingers too close to the needle and that's something you never want to do. If that happens, um, stop the machine, obviously, turn it off, go to the hospital. You do not want a needle in your finger. But that's never happened to me. So that's why this little, it helps. It, it means you're not going to make a trip to the hospital. Um, and the, the last thing you need to do is, in my machine, at the back, there's a little switch. And there's these little teeth and they're called feed dogs. And um, when I switch this switch, the feed dogs come up. And when you're sewing normally, the feed dogs um, take the fabric through the machine at a steady rate. But whenever you're doing free motion embroidery, you drop the feed dogs. And I click this wee switch and my feed dogs are dropping down below the metal plate, which means I, have, I can go in any direction. The feed dogs are not pulling the fabric in a in a horizontal direction so we've got our thread our top thread our bobbin thread our needle correct needle our darning foot and we've dropped our feet dogs so now we can start i always like to make sure the tails of my thread are at the back and what i'll do is i'll lift the presser foot which lifts the foot up slightly and then the darning foot has a little bit of give in it as well so just to get it over the edge of the of the rim of the hoop and i like to start in the middle so press the foot down get comfortable make sure your um threads are out of the way and i like to hold it with my finger just to make sure it doesn't sort of get involved in the embroidery and what i do is my machine has a special feature called needle down 
and it means whenever I stop pressing the foot pedal the needle stay in the down into the fabric and it holds it and it means if you're doing a very delicate edge or a little leg of a bird it's not going to wobble so but that aside what I do is I want precision where I'm going to start my embroidery so I use the the wheel of the machine just to put the tip of the needle into the fabric and then I press my needle down um, button you'll hear it make a noise and the needle will go further down into the fabric so there we go now and now we're going to start embroidery uh, embroider and what I'm going to do is I'm going to do an outline first of all and then I'm going to color it in when you're coloring in you start you move the fabric in little small um, movements and away we go The stage I've got to now is I've done a little outline of one of the flowers so I'm just going to lift the presser foot up and when I lift the presser foot up you can see my needle is still um, in the in the position so my work's not going to move anywhere but I want to cut off this little top thread because I don't want it to get um, tangled up in my image and there's a little I'm using these little snippers and also this um, stitch ripper to just lift out little bits that I don't want in it and also these are very useful, these wee tweezers are useful for whenever you make mistakes. Um, when you're doing free motion embroidery it's done so quickly that people say, um, and the stitching is so dense, people say that if you make a mistake you can't, you may just start another piece. But if you make a mistake, and making mistakes is okay because that's how you learn, that's how I learnt, you can fix it. But, and I'm going to show you the secret tips of how to do that. So I've got my my um, outline of my poppy, but I'm not really that happy with it. So what I think I'll do is I'll go around with it again. So my work's, my needle's down in the work, but the presser foot is up. And if I press my pedal with the presser foot up, the sewing machine's going to tell me off. The presser foot is up. Okay, thank you very much. I'll put the presser foot down and then I can, away we go. And I'm just going to do another outline. As you can see, I'm going at a medium speed. You can't go really slowly. So what I've done is, what I tend to do is I'll, especially when I'm doing fur or feathers of um, a bird or an animal, I like to sew in the direction that the fur lies and it gives it a more realistic effect. But because this is a poppy and it doesn't have any fur or feathers, but even so, I, I like to sort of work at my piece from different directions because sometimes the foot gets in the way and if you can't see what you're doing you don't know what you're doing so sometimes I'll work upside down but whatever sees yes I like to hold on to the hoop to sort of give you a, a grip on what you're doing so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to colour in this wee flower and there's quite a lot to colour in so don't try and colour in with big long stitches the best thing for colouring in a base colour is to do work in little small sections across as if you're going across a line and then go down and go back. So watch and see what happens. Now, if I lift up the pressure fruit and let you see, it's not perfect and it doesn't have to be perfect but I'm going to go back and fill in those bits so I'll turn my work around you don't have to I just like to see what I'm doing so wherever the white bits are I want them filled in with red so. now I'm in total control of this when I'm not sure of what I'm doing I lift my foot off and stop so don't get scared, don't think, oh my goodness, it's like a runaway train. It's not, you're the person who's in control of it. So now I've turned my work, I've done the top bit of this petal, so I'm gonna turn it around again so I can see the white bit that I have to fill in and away we go again.
Now, we've filled in nearly all of the puppy and um, I've lifted up my presser foot and I'm going to lift up the darning foot slightly and just remove it, the hoop from the machine. As you can see, it's connected by the top thread and the bottom thread, so I'm just going to snip those to release it. And if you look at the work, this puppy is, it's not perfect. There's little bits of white, but I'm not too bothered about that because if you look at real puppies, they're sort of waxy and shiny and those little white bits could be the sun shining on the waxy bits of the petals. So what we're going to do now is um, I'm going to put in the little black centre. Right, what I'm going to do now is um, show you how to put the little black bit in the middle of this puppy. Sometimes I've coloured in the whole of this puppy and there's quite a dense stitching in this area. What you have to be careful of whenever you're overlaying another colour is the fabric can only take so many layers of stitching. It'll get to a point where it's too thick and your machine will not thank you for it. It will let you know it's not happy. So you have to just watch. I'm going to put in a, a black dot in the centre for the centre of the puppy and I'm quick, going to quickly show you. I'm going to change the colour of the thread. So take off the top thread and I'm going to put swap it with the black. You will have to do this a lot, especially if you're doing birds or um, animals, because the different tones in the in the colours of the fur and the and the fa and the feathers are very um, tonal, and you have to keep changing the colour, and then you forget to do a wee bit, and you've got to go back. So you will you'll learn to do this really quickly. So there, I've put the black in the bobbin, and we've got black in the machine. You'll have to make sure that you put your thread through all the correct um, little uh, grippers and holders. Otherwise, you, you'll, you'll have problems. And that's the first thing you do if you do start to have problems is check that your machine is threaded properly, even the bobbin as well. So what I've done is when I'm going to thread my um, needle, I always snip the end off because usually it goes really sort of wispy. And it, if it's wispy, it's hard to get it through the eye of the needle. This machine has an automatic needle thread or helper jobby, but I very rarely use it because I've done it so many times, I almost know where the hole is without even looking. Me showing off. But <laughs> so I've got the um the thread through the eye of the needle and take it through to the back and put the hoop under the needle again. So lift the presser foot up and the wee darning foot and take it over. So I want to be really precise with where I'm putting the centre of the floor. So press your foot down. I'm holding the little thread so it's out of the way. And I put the needle in precisely where I want it. And you can see the needle has got a little bubble of thread. So I'm just going to pull that tight because I don't want a bubble in my work. And then I'm going to press the needle down button to hold it in place. And now I'm going to start sewing. Now, before I start sewing, I am thinking about, I want to keep this a little small round shape. So in my mind, I'm, I know what I want to do before I do it. Because if you just turn on the machine and you're not thinking about where, you, what, where you're going and what you have to do, you'll end up in tears because you'll have to start again. But so think about what you're going to do. I'm going to do a little black circle in the middle of this. I'm holding onto my thread so it doesn't get involved and away we go. So round we go in a circle and I'm thinking to myself, is this circle too big? I'm filling in the middle of the circle. I'm thinking it's not round enough so I'm going round and round and now I'm thinking that's enough. I've taken my foot off the pedal and the machine has been told to needle down so it's still in the fabric so it's not going to go anywhere. So what I'll do is I'll go, turn off the needle down lift the presser foot and bring it out and there we are we have one little puppy and you'll see I'll have to cut the thread on the back as well because that's the bobbin thread still and come back I'm going to show you when I've it all finished and that's my little puppy and as you can see it's not perfect but I like it and I hope you do too we're going to speed this section up so it's not too long and boring for you.
Ta-da! All finished and ready to go into a nice frame. But sure, come back next time and learn more about free motion embroidery. Cheerio for now, YouTube channel friends. Bye!